What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 158 of the Games and Grabs podcast. My name is Sunny G, and I'm here, as always, with Vince Steele. Hello. And Steve. Hello. And we're finally back. Me. We're finally here <laughs> do, recording an actual podcast. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> I feel like it's been ages since we recorded a podcast. It has. It feels like we've had a, had a little, little holiday, a few weeks off. Yeah, we have had a little mm. holiday, a little bit of a break. Yeah. Me and Steve did a live last weekend, and then you yeah. guys, I think, did a pod without me. No, wait. We've yeah, done... me, me and Sydney, well, you and me did one without Steve, and before that, me and Steve did one without you. Uh, That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the first time the three of us have done a podcast together in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Yeah. yeah right. Well, it's, it's all good. You see, that, that's the good thing. We can rotate. We can, uh, <laughs> you know... That you know, that's just we can bring you all sorts of different things, and it's good times. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, good times. How's everyone doing? Finn, how you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. Yeah, I'm still, still going, still alive. You're still going. Well, that's <laughs> a good thing. I like your. Uh, um, I'm a big fan of your Untitled Goose Game T-shirt that you're wearing that's currently. Great. Honk. That's very cool. Honk. <laughs> that is very cool. Great game as well. Hell of a game. I love it. It's currently my theme on my game. PS4. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Honk. Honk. Um, Steve, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I'm very busy, but very good at the same time. Yeah, you've had your um, bit of decorating going on around your house. That's good. I have, yeah, mm. yeah. It's not quite finished just yet, but it's getting there. Uh, there it looks go, like see. a it looks like a modern living room now, apart from instead of the dark and dingy. Uh, mold infested room it was before you make you make it sound like you were living in a dungeon <laughs> i was it was a dungeon it felt like it at times yeah <laughs> it felt like a dungeon at times right okay fair enough <laughs> well now it looks great thank you yeah yeah we're getting there absolutely um i don't know what we're going to talk about this week you know um we'll just talk about the usual stuff yeah. We, we tend to just make this podcast up on the fly. We don't come in with a plan. <laughs> if you expect a plan from us, wrong podcast. Um, then you've you've come to the wrong podcast. Yeah. But you you know <laughs> if you're a regular regular listener to this show, you already know that. Exactly. You come here expecting nothing, and leaving with a few laughs, maybe. Yeah, hopefully. You definitely don't come away from this with any new information. <laughs> no. no, it's all. Uh... No, you certainly come... not. No, you come here for nonsense, Absolutely. and that's okay. That's what we're here to provide you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Where you know other nonsense. podcasts, yeah, you know other other podcasts, they want to sort of be informative and you know be serious, real podcasts. Where's the fun in that? We don't play. We don't do that. Nah, that's boring. No, we don't even come in and know what we're going to talk about. We just turn up. Yeah, <laughs> three guys, <laughs> three mics. And we just turn up. Yeah. Exactly. We'll, like, we'll, we'll, we'll shoehorn some video games in there. We'll shoehorn some wrestling in there. And that's why it's called the Games and Grass podcast. Exactly. <laughs> we, need, we need something. That's exactly. It. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know what? We might as well start the show the same way that we always do. Yeah. Um, so let's do that. Finn. Hello. What are you playing? Uh, what indeed so I've been playing a lot of Far Cry 6 uh, recently which has been really good oh okay uh, it's been, that's a slow slow start it took me a while to get into it uh, once I started unlocking like better weapons and like I've got the wingsuit now which is really fun to use I'm like nice. getting into it I'm like okay I'm clearing play- into the map I'm getting like getting all uh, taking over all the bases uh, collecting all the things like classic open world Ubisoft stuff mm. ignoring the main quest line it's like oh yeah i'll get, I'll get to that yeah. <laughs> by the time i get there i'll be like super powered and have all the best guns in the game <laughs> well then you can just breeze through it yeah exactly i wonder the early missions is like again i i got a bunch of stuff got a bunch of good guns and like one of the early missions uh that keeps it here use this shitty sniper rifle um and part of the, that's part of the quest line it's like it's really gut scene he's using a crappy uh sniper rifle and it jams it's like, but I've got this amazing sniper rifle I've been using the whole game. Just use that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's a bit weird. But otherwise, it's a really good game, and I'm enjoying it. Good. That's that one. Um, 
How would you how would you sort of compare it to the other Far Cry games? I mean, I, I know obviously you've you've been through some of the other ones. Yeah. Um, played three... How would you sort of rate it up against any of the others? Yeah, I played three and four. Didn't play five. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically every like it's an evolution, basically, of like three and four. Like it has elements of the first of like the older games while adding its own new spin on things. Uh, hasn't evolved a whole lot. I must like you know. Every other Ubisoft game, they are pretty much essentially the same thing. <laughs> but it has improved, and I do. Uh, I am really enjoying it. If it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, which is typical of Ubisoft, really. Exactly, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It still works, it's still fun. Exactly, yeah. It still works, it's still fun. That's the main thing. Yeah. Go on, Ubisoft. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, I've also been playing, um, I know it's just on Game Pass, it's going to be coming off Game Pass in a few days, so I thought I'd jump on it. As a ukulele and the impossible layer, which is uh, ah. yeah, which uh, the first ukulele game was uh, on a march to like Banjo Kazooie, uh, which was eh, kind of okay, it didn't review super well. Uh, but this one is more of a march to Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo, and this oh, one's okay, this one's reviewed a lot better and it's a, it's a lot more polished and a lot more uh, fun and good. So, is it, uh, is it like 2.5D this one then? Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, level 2.5D, and you've got like an overworld, which is like sort of top-down, like a Zelda, uh, which is really fun as well. It's like a lot of puzzles cool. in there to unlock new levels. Uh, and yeah, it's really good, really polished, really fun. Um, I've got like three days to beat it, <laughs> which I think I can. I'm putting... You can do it, Finn. You could do it. I can do it. I'm not going to... <laughs> ultimate problem. faith in you. Yeah, I'm not going to try getting all the achievements or anything like that, because I'll take forever. This blasted... Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this blasted the main game. It's very grindy. You've got to grind out a lot of stuff. I just can't be asked. Okay, um, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to blast it, finish that. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, that's about it recently. Um, I have also bought, I've yet to play uh, Dying Light in, um, Enhanced Edition, all the DLC and stuff on BC for like okay. £9. <laughs> PC nerd, okay. Uh, yeah, PC nerd, because um, I do actually have it on BS4, but it I can play it better on my PC, <laughs> if that makes sense. I play it at like 60 FPS, 4K, all that fun stuff. Fair um, enough. Okay. And, the, and the trophy list is a uh, garbage, so I was like, oh well, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to taint my trophy list with it. Um, it's a game I could never get into. Dying Light. I don't yeah. know what it was about it. I just, I found it really difficult to sort of get on with. Yeah, I've seen that. I a love lot. the idea of it, but it was just, I just couldn't. You know, I like the idea of like the, um, but I love the setting. I think the setting's great, mm. and I, I like the idea of the sort of the parkour stuff and the way they've tried to integrate it into that kind of world. But I don't know. There's just something about it for me that didn't click. Yeah, that's fair. I've seen a few things like that. Uh, apparently, it improved over time. Like um, when it first came out, it was very buggy and a lot of uh, things not right with it. But over time, it's improved a lot. Apparently. And oh, maybe, okay. Yeah, the main reason for buying it is um, because of the Game Awards, which we'll get to later. And they've like shown up a trailer for like Dying Light 2, which is finally going to come out eventually, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> 25 year. years in the making. <laughs> yeah, just about. Um, like, you know what? I'm gonna finally going to play this game. I'm going to give it a try. It's only like £9 on Steam, so why not? Oh, fair enough. Yeah. For £9, it's, it's not even a gamble, is it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. You can't go wrong. That's a good thing about PC gaming. It's like, you can get games like super, super cheap, especially like last-gen yeah. games. Um, and yeah, that's about it, really. Um, I've played a bit more Halo multiplayer. I haven't played the campaign yet. I'll get around to it. Once I'm done with Fire Cry, I'll jump into Halo. How um, are you finding the multiplayer? It's fun. It's good. It's, it's Halo. It feels like Halo. I feel like 343 have finally nailed that Halo feel that Bungie mm-hmm. had. Um, it just feels right. You know? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree totally. I just feel totally right. And when, when you play the campaign, I've played a little bit of the campaign... Uh, when you do play it, you'll feel the same way. And it's, um, yeah, it's sort of like a, a real comeback for Halo. Yeah, that's good. I heard, I heard some of the uh, funny dialogue that like the grunts have. Let's go out on Twitter. It's like fun. Yeah, it is, you know what? It is pretty funny. The yeah. uh, Some of the things that they say, the way, the way that they sort of chatter um, when there's like combat and stuff going on, it's really funny. It's yeah. good. Look forward to playing that. Um, so yeah, that's about it, I reckon. How about you, Steve? I too have been playing uh, quite a bit of Far Cry Six. Nice, nice. Uh, I think I'm about a quarter of the way through the story. Nice. Okay. Uh, so I've still got uh, a while, a while to go, but I feel like I've been playing it forever. Same thing, you know. You just 
doing other things, aren't you? And little little side missions, uh, do a bit of fishing, bit of hunting. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's good, um, <laughs> but it's, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I've uh, I feel like I've become, become quite the marksman with the uh, the sniper rifle as well. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, um, nice. Yeah, excellent game, superb. Um, I, I already know I'm probably going to have a, a second run through of it. Uh, oh, as the, okay. As the, fe- as the play as the female character as well at the end of it. So, mm. um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've uh, really, really enjoyed it, and I've still got so much more to do. So, um, that's good. I'm glad uh, you enjoyed it. I mean, do, do, do you yeah. feel like you're stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit with it? Hell yeah, yeah. I, I've just, I mean, I was. Uh, you mentioned FIFA the other day, and it kind of dawned on me that I don't have FIFA 22. And I'm not missing having a football game in my life either. That's um, fair. I, I mean, I will probably get it at some point when it kind of drops in price and whatnot. But I've had, I, I suppose for me, I've had a football manager to, um, you know, fill the, gap. Scratch, fill the gap in terms of a in terms of a football a football game. Um, so that's the other game that I've been mainly playing. So I was playing a lot of FM21. But for some reason, it stopped working and it's going to be leaving Game Pass soon. So I loaded up uh, and started a new save on Football Manager 22. So I've cool. nice. uh, pl- played a bit of that. Uh, I've decided, like everyone else out there that's playing Football Manager at the minute, decided to be Newcastle Manager because <laughs> they are recently a rich club. Um, but you are still Newcastle United, so it's very hard to attract the top-level players. Yeah, uh, the squad is absolutely atrocious, and the backroom staff are even worse. So, <laughs> if I've played, if I've played ten hours of this recent save, eight hours of it has been spent on recruiting staff and new players. <laughs> nice. Um, so it's been a real. Um, well, it's been good. It's it's been testing, and it's uh, it's it's what's great about about Football Manager. You know, you can really get stuck in and really make you know make huge changes uh, so that's, that's been good and i've also been playing forza in and out of in and out of forza five um, nice. just what a game what and that's the beauty game. of forza you start something you really sort of have to it's a game you can have on the side whilst playing other yeah. things yeah 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 and it's not even uh, the last time i went on to, uh, on forza i didn't do a single race but i was on it for a good two two hours, two, three hours. Yeah. And I was just finding fast travel boards and different things. And <laughs> you don't have to race on that game. And it's still a very enjoyable game. It's a beautiful so, world to drive around as well. It's amazing. So, it's amazing. You know, if you filter the map and sort of look for the yeah. fast travel boards and stuff like that, you could literally just go driving around, maybe look for the roads that you've not covered. Yeah. And you know what? It's just, it's one of those, it's, it's just one of those games that is worth owning an Xbox for, or um, yeah. a good, a, you know, a, a good PC, so you can really experience it properly. Yeah. Mm. And I would say the same yeah, for yeah. Halo as well. Like, you know, Microsoft have done a really good job um, these last few months of establishing Xbox a bit more, uh, or at least sort of giving people a reason to go out and buy either the Xbox Series S or the Xbox Series X, because you know they're, they're giving these great experiences like Halo, like Forza. So. Yeah, it's um, good time to be an Xbox fan, but yeah, Forza is just—it's just so good. Like it, you know, there's very little we can say about it that we haven't already said on this podcast yeah. about this Forza and the Forza's previous. It, it, they're just—they're just incredible racing games. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe not breaking the mold in terms of originality at this point, but uh, you know, yeah, I don't—I don't think at this point they need to because that formula just works and the settings keep getting better the gameplay keeps getting better and that's the most important thing they're still very enjoyable to play yeah i i agree and i, th- I think i mean I'm of, I'm of the opinion of not only is it a great racing game but it is a great game oh just absolutely be- it is because, because of because of all the different things that you know the licensing with the cars the way they look just just all the little things that are w- within the game and it just I mean, with Forza, okay, I, I was late onto the Forza 4 um, bandwagon, uh, but I, I got nowhere near sort of completing that game before uh, 5 came out. And and the same will happen with this. I mean, Forza 6 could come out in five years' time, <laughs> and 
I, I don't know whether I'll I'll have completed four or five because they just keep adding and yeah. adding and adding, and it's fantastic. It's you know, and there'll be two expansions great. as well to come. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and you're right. It's it's worth owning an Xbox for. I mean, I put a a, a quite a um, uh, looking for bites sort of tweet a few a few weeks ago saying, imagine missing out on a game like Forza just because you're a PlayStation fanboy. And yeah, it's absolutely yeah. true. You know, just, you know, there isn't a console war. Just, you know, you play what you want to play, but you are missing out. And, and it goes the other way as well. You know, if you are such an Xbox fanboy that you won't don't want to own a PlayStation, you're missing out on some unbelievable games. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. It's a great game, Forza, and yeah, you're absolutely right. I know Bearded Buffoon, it, it convinced him to to get an Xbox Series S yeah, um, as well. Nice. So, yeah. For the for the money that an Xbox Series S costs and the games that, you know, uh, with that and Game Pass, I mean, for me, it's still a, a no-brainer and one of the, oh. one of, if not the best deal in gaming still. Yeah, you yeah, still need easy. to buy Xbox games. Just Game Pass and you're just good for life. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was game. thinking about this earlier on. I was thinking, like, with a lot of consoles now, especially the sort of Sony and uh, Microsoft consoles, you you could literally buy them, buy the consoles, and never really have to buy a game. Just pay for your monthly subscription. I mean, PlayStation Now's yeah. getting better, and I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit later on. Yeah, and you know, Game Pass speaks for itself, and you know, you could literally buy these expensive consoles, just pay for your subscription and have just a wealth of games at your disposal to play of different varieties as well. Not just your, you know, your AAA blockbusters like Halo and Forza and stuff like that. Um, you know, the indie games that you maybe wouldn't even think of playing or backwards compatible games that you, you, you've not played. You, yeah. you literally, all you have to do now is just buy the console and pay for a subscription and have one incredible experience, um, you know, playing video games. And that's that is yeah. amazing for me. I, I think, yeah, you know what, video game consoles to to you know a lot of people they they they, they seem expensive, but when you do combine Game Pass and you do combine PlayStation Now Plus, you know it's not it doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, look at the yeah. games that were on PlayStation Plus this month. I mean, you know, Lego uh, DC Super Villains was as part of it. I'm gonna play that. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a version of Godfall on there and um, Mortal Shell. Is that what it's called? Mortal Shell, yeah. It's like a uh, Dog Souls kind of game. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what? £100-ish worth of games? Yeah, easily. All for just part of your monthly subscription. Yeah. yeah. The Godfall one it's is nuts. weird. The Godfall one is weird because didn't it just like the end game? It doesn't have the campaign? Or something weird? Yeah, like so it's like um, Godfall Challenge Edition? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, um, and it's just the end game content, not the single player campaign, which I I find incredibly bizarre. But apparently, uh, they're actually releasing the challenge edition separately. Right. Weird. I don't understand mm. what it is. I don't understand why they've done it. I really don't. It's weird. But um, maybe they saw everyone thinking that Godfall was going to be on PlayStation Plus. And they were like, <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, we'll put we'll put Godfall on PlayStation Plus, but guess what? Fuck you! It's the end game. You you've got all the weapons, all the stuff. You haven't got to grind for it. Do nothing. No fun. No fun allowed. Just, just yeah. No fun allowed. Just <laughs> just the end game stuff. <laughs> harsh. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. Harsh. <laughs> very harsh. Just brutal from Sony. <laughs> But now I've I um I, I've also down, I've I've downloaded the uh, Halo campaign, but I'm I am not touching it until I've finished Far Cry because I'll just I I just feel like I'll end up getting drawn into that so much I'll forget Far Cry and blah blah blah. So. And do you know what? I you think you'll me. really enjoy Halo. Yeah, I think I will as well. I think yeah. I will. It looks so good. My uh, yeah, and it's stunning as well. Like yeah, it absolutely looks, it looks... stunning for all the mocking that it got when it was first revealed and people were sort of uh, putting memes up of the, the bad guy and all that sort of stuff. So from that to, to this, it's just a completely different game. It's it's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Comments, try it. Same. Same. Cool. Good. How about you, Sonny? 
Um, I've been playing a, lo- a, a you know a load of different bits. I have been playing Halo, and I think it's I think it's really really great. Uh, I'm looking forward to you two guys trying it so that we can talk about it properly. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just different. It's not a linear Halo campaign anymore. Uh, they've opened the world up, and you can go and do different bits, and um, there's a lot to it, and that's great. And I'm assuming they're going to add to it moving forward. Also, um, I've been playing Forza as well. Again, don't need to really say anything too much about that. Um, but um, what I have been sort of playing these last few days, um, Kaylee bought me uh, an Oculus Quest 2 Ooh. for Christmas, and she's let me have it early. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and I have to say, it's just an unbelievable piece of technology. Yeah. Like... Uh, we've had we were you know we were day one adopters of PlayStation VR both you and I Finn yeah yep. um, but you know for and for this to be totally wireless totally camera free in terms of having to stand in front of a camera and be in line and all that sort of stuff yeah it's just it's another world uh, and this I feel like this is how virtual reality um, in terms of video games was meant to be. I mean, yeah, okay, the technology is only going to get better over the time, but this is just, it's mind-blowing. Like, you put the headset on, and it's all there. It's already there for you. All you, you know, it asks you, when you, like, play certain games, to draw a border where you're playing spaces. Yeah. Um, cool. So, you know, and then it creates a boundary wall, like a virtual boundary wall around you, so that you know when you're getting near to where your boundary is basically yeah we're about to punch uh, a wall, wasn't we? yeah i mean it's fully immersive full 360 you know movement wow. and you can just do so much so obviously with the games you know, within the boundary wall you can sort of walk around and do stuff and turn around oh you know i was playing um, a demo i haven't actually bought any games for it yet i will do i haven't yet um i've been playing a fishing game that was free called bait nice and honestly I've just been sitting there having a wonderful time <laughs> fishing, <laughs> fucking fishing. I don't even <laughs> like fishing, right? I don't, I'm not into fishing or nothing like that. But Told I was you sitting it was good. There, yeah, but I've been sitting there in my chair, <laughs> my gaming chair, and the way that it, it works, obviously the, the the quest controllers they are um, they recognise your hands, like you literally your all your fingers. Wow, because it's got. Um, I can't remember what the technology is called, but it's it's hand tracking. It's got hand tracking. Oh, okay. So the you know the movements you make with your hands on the controller basically uh, is what because obviously with PlayStation Move you press the trigger button at the back of the thing and that usually signals that you're going to pick something up. Yeah. But with this, you physically have to make the gesture of you know making a, a clenched fist to pick something up. Wow, that's cool. So you know you, I'm playing this fishing game. And, you know, you cast off and then when the fish comes in, you do the controller to reel it in. And again, you have to make that motion of like you would like you would be clinching the, the reel to, to get it back in. Wow. And it's, it's just it's just unbelievable. I've been playing a drumming game, which is really cool. Uh, nice. I'm getting a real sweat on as well. Now I can see why drummers get such a sweat on. I'm doing it in <laughs> virtual reality, but drummers in real life. All right, fair enough. My hat's tipped to you. Here I am thinking it's easy. It's not. But, it, you know, and it's just such, it, it really is just such an unbelievable piece of technology. For like for the price of it, with it being completely all in one headset um, and the controllers, it's, I can't recommend it enough. And I think it has sold really well this um, mm. sort of holiday season, especially with people not being able to get hold of PlayStations or you know, Xbox Series X's and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think people are sort of turned to this. I mean, uh, our local game store, they were advertise- advertising them, like right at the front of the shop. As soon as you walked to the wow. door, they were there. And it was like, um, but now it's not. And you can't see it anywhere in the shop. So it's almost like they've sold them. Yeah. Wow. wow. And it's crazy, yeah. but um, there's games I want to try. You know, there's games I'm going to get. I'm going to get Resident Evil 4 in VR. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Um, it's supposed to be incredible. Yeah. Naturally, I'm going to go Beat Saber. Uh, there's a Jurassic World aftermath game that I'm looking forward to playing. Nice. And I, f- I feel that it's just. It really is the future. Yeah. I even had a game of. I even had a game of Poker Stars VR with a group of American guys yesterday. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's what just pop- randomly. 
Yeah, it's a popular thing on, I'm not sure if it's on Oculus Quest, I assume it is. It's a VR chat, which if you just, you pick your, make your character and just yeah. sit in a room chatting with random people. And, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's there. It's, it's, it's crazy how, how it works and it's, it's just super impressive. And I honestly, I can't recommend it enough. If you think, if I thought the PlayStation VR was like t- totally mind blowing. Yeah. It's and now I've played this, I could never go back to it because oh. just because of how impressive it is, like the clarity on the screen, the speed in which the games load up, and it's literally just all integrated. Yeah, that's and amazing. It, it's it's you can even it's have your phone, awesome. you can even have your phone notifications come through to the headset while you've got it on. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's mad. That's so that's just mental. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's really crazy. So. I'm looking forward to sort of deep diving into into more games on it, but um, it's so incredibly impressive, and I can't recommend it enough. Yep, it's an expensive starting point, um, but for what it is and how it works and the experiences I think you could get out of it, I I think that is is well worth the price. That's cool. Uh, yeah, for I, sure. yeah. I think the Beat Saber on on that is. Uh... It's pretty cool because you get like 360 songs, which means you've got you're yeah, like turning yeah. around, slashing behind you, stuff like that, which you can't do on PlayStation, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah. So that's not really cool. But uh, yeah, I'll be yeah, tempted to pick one up before in the past, but I'm, I'm still holding out for PSVR 2. I'm holding out. Hopefully next year it will come out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it probably will back in the next year. Yeah. But f- for me, the biggest thing with this is the fact that it's wireless. Yeah, that's, that's you're a not, big deal. You don't have them constraints and the other thing that's unbelievable about it is the built-in um surround sound speakers oh wow yeah so like i was sat talking to these american dudes yesterday while i was playing poker (laughs) um and like it was just all fully if if you felt like you had headphones in but there's no headphones yeah wow you can plug headphones in if you want to but you don't have to yeah Uh, Yeah. because it's just completely built in surround sound and the sounds unbelievable very cool so yeah, so good. I know that I know um, Craig from Pure Dead has got a uh, an Oculus as well, and he was saying how great it is. Also, but mm. yeah, I very much mirror that sentiment. It's incredibly impressive. Nice, awesome, very cool. A um, couple of other things I've been playing before we move on. Uh, I've been playing Pokemon, uh, the pink one, Shining Pearl. Oh yeah, uh, I've been playing that. It's very good. Nice. It's Pokemon. Cool. I've heard it's very easy. The main are very easy uh, because of the uh, EXP share. So all you Pokemon level up together, it makes it very easy to just level up and stomp your way through the game. So I've heard. Uh, it does feel it does feel like that. Yeah, it's good though. It's you know it's good fun. It's, yeah, it's yeah. one of them things we you haven't really got to think about Pokemon, and I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's like a, a fun cutesy RPG. Yeah, uh, I love the art style for this as well. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, that's really good. I've been playing a game called Cruise and Blast, which um, yeah. on also on Switch, which is uh, an arcade racer. I was telling you guys about it a, um, mm. a few pods back, actually. And that's oh, that's yeah. really really good fun. Awesome. Yeah, good stuff. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. Nice, great stuff. Fun times. Fun times, indeed. I'll be had. Um, yeah. So it's man, I can't believe how close to Christmas it is. I know. It's insane. Like, it's nuts that Christmas Eve is next Friday. <laughs> Impossible. Oh, do you know, <laughs> for a second there, I thought, no, you're wrong. But you're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm 100% correct, yeah. You are 100% correct. Yep. Yeah, hey. and it's crazy. I can't wait. No, I, I, you know, I love Christmas. <clears throat> I know I know you're a Scrooge. Because you work retail. He works retail. I was going to say, you took the pens out of my mouth. He works retail. That's why he hates Christmas. Yeah, he's getting sick of it. <laughs> but, That's uh, fair enough. No, I don't I've hate Christmas. I've listened to yeah. uh, Christmas songs since like early November. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's Christmas. Shut up. We know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I love Christmas. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the break. I know you don't get much of a break, Finn, so that's a, more of a me and Steve thing, really. I get two days. Uh, we get Christmas, a Christmas Day and Boxing Day. I get up. So that's nice. So that's something. Oof. <laughs> but I do have two weeks off. Start of January, more birthday. Nice chunk of time. I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward nice. to that. Looking forward to that more than looking forward to Christmas. Just time to relax and not go to work. 
Yeah, I think for me, you know, as you get older, you know, I still love Christmas anyway, for just for the Christmas side of things. But it's that time off that you get to just relax, yeah, and chill, time. and eat a shitload of food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as an adult, you can you can do that anytime, yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but as with Christmas, it's, you can just use it as an excuse, and it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, I mean, it because of Christmas. Yeah. That's because. <laughs> yeah, me and Kayla, we, we every time we go like into a supermarket at the minute, we're like, oh, we'll get this to, to eat at Christmas. Are like, <laughs> you planning like the the fucking fat as fuck food that you're going to eat at Christmas? Yeah, yeah, I've been in a similar thing. And I, I can't wait. Yeah, I've still got a bunch of like useless vouchers from ages ago. Oh, it's going to all on Christmas garbage. So, <laughs> it's got like pots of like twiglets and things of like... They're not, they're not useless. They're not useless vouchers, Finn. Yeah, but all I buy, all I spend them on sweets and chocolate and coffee. Treats I don't eat because I'm in my cupboard still. <laughs> I'll around some important, send, right? them around here. send them around here. <laughs> yeah, send us the vouchers. For, we'll spend them for you. We'll show you how, <laughs> send how us it sweets. works. <laughs> yeah, send us the sweet <laughs> chocolate, yeah. Um, but yeah, coffee's important. Coffee's a good thing. Spend it all the coffee. Coffee is important. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's so important. <laughs> so important. Yeah. Keep, More keep, important the older you get. Yeah, keep, keeps you going. Can't get through your day oh. without it. I think that's putting it mildly. I think you're being. I think you're selling coffee short a little bit. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I you need the brown. I, I missed. I missed out on my um, my three cups of uh, morning brown uh, <laughs> the other the other day because of uh, I had a meeting and then another meeting, then another meeting, and before I knew it, it was midday. And by mm. one o'clock, I was like, "Fuck is all me? I'm so tired. What is wrong with me?" I've been doing the same thing. No, no morning brown. No, yeah. but, you know. You gotta have no, your morning brown. I think we might no be brown, no party. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. No brown, no party. <laughs> yeah, I That's couldn't give coffee up because of, yeah, because of I mean, I suffer from migraines anyway. But I've heard that the uh, the headaches from the caffeine. You know, if you go cold turkey. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I've heard that. Yeah, I think I'd be too scared Rude. to give coffee up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I couldn't give it up. We're addicts. Yeah. That's what we. That's what we've become. We're coffee addicts. We can't. Pretty we, much. We can't yeah. get off it. I don't, I'd, I'd end up snorting it. <laughs> I mean, the, coffee amount of coffees, <laughs> the amount of coffee I drink in a day is just it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. I don't have too much, but if I if I don't have a, at least one cup of morning coffee, I'm just yeah, I'm like Steve. One like, cup. Yeah, I, I mean, my coffee's quite strong. I have a lot of black and you have but, uh, black. Yeah, because I'm because I'm badass. Uh, you are badass. <laughs> that is badass. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I can't have coffee black. That's fair. It's it's it is very bitter, but I. Like you know, bits of things like like dark chocolate and stuff like that. And you are of course bitter towards Christmas. So, and I'm, uh, I'm a bitter you. person, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bitter man. Bitter, <laughs> bitter, man. <laughs> bitter, bitter man. Bitter, bitter man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still need to uh, still need to sort Greg out with his um, anytime brown mug. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, to get one of those. Yeah. Shout out to Greg. So uh, we've not uh, mentioned him on this pod for a little while. Hi, okay. <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> oh dad <laughs> hi hi dad you're in the other room hi <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. oh man see I could never stop doing this podcast I don't think just because too fun it's it's just it's, it's just outrageous fun yeah it is yeah it is it is the live one and, we did the other week was good fun we just basically talked about films for an hour it was t- yeah. it was great awesome. it was really yeah. good we literally just sort of we started the podcast up well, with no plan, and then the the chat just took over, yeah, and we just rolled with it for an hour or so. That's awesome, yeah. and that's why I love doing the lives because you know you get that level of interactivity that you don't obviously get with with doing this one. Obviously, this one, but you know we have a we have a plan. There's podcast tail. He loves it. He loves getting involved, <laughs> even though he's only sort of um, a little bit in. <laughs> but you know that that's the good thing with the lives. We get to sort of do something a little bit different and. Uh, interact with the people who you know choose to spend their evenings with us, their Sunday evenings, which you know we do appreciate. So it's great. You know, we'll we'll try and get a couple more lives in, especially over the Christmas break and stuff as well. Um, and it's definitely something that we uh, we we enjoy doing and aim to do more of. Yes, yeah, I want to do more uh, gaming streams soon. Have no time to yes. set it up properly yet, but um, I want to do retro streams of my old PS One, PS Two games, etc. Um, nice. I have a, a new cable for my PS2, which basically lets you plug it into HDMI, and it upscales the image so it's um, clear a lot clearer for new TVs. Because uh, we've plugged in like a, 
Yeah, it's really good. It's amazing how. Oh really? Yeah, it's amazing how much clearer it looks because when you use like old cables on the new TV, you get like fuzzy look and it just looks kind of gross. But with this, all the fuzz is gone and you just like see a super clear image of like classic PS One games. PS One games. That's awesome. And yeah, it just looks. Mm, it's the best I've seen cool. a PS One game look. And it's like that. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and PS Two games obviously. So that'd be cool. That's something to look forward to. Will you be doing that to Twitch or to YouTube? Uh, I think both. To start oh. with, at least, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So we need to we need to keep the we need, we want to keep these channels more active. The last few weeks, to be honest, it's just been crazy. You know, for all of us, I think we've all had stuff on, and um, it's it's difficult to sort of uh, balance work, life, and podcast at times. Oh yeah. But <laughs> you know, things are starting to calm down now. I know it's Christmas, but you know, we've all got a bit more free time on our hands, or we will have. So yeah, we'll be doing a bit more stuff, especially sort of um, from the start of next year onwards. I definitely aim to sort of stream a bit more as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to do some playthroughs of stuff, and okay. yeah, I might do I might do a playthrough of Resident Evil Four VR because be awesome. you can cast directly from the Oculus headset, and also um, it uses your phone and the Oculus app to. To do, I'll figure it all out. But I might do that. That'd be pretty cool. I did it. I did normal Resident Evil Four on stream, so I think it'd be pretty cool to do a playthrough of Resident Evil Four VR on stream as well. Yeah, that'd be very cool. But uh, yeah, I want to try and do like at least one stream a week. I think mm-hmm. that'd be good. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, if we do, if we do, if we could all do like a stream a week, that's like three streams a week between us. Congratulations yeah. on just good maths. Yeah, quick maths. Quick maths. Yeah. That's really good maths. Uh, Steiner maths. If, firstly, I'm proud of you for <laughs> how good <laughs> Steiner maths. Yeah, you have thirty-three percent of the streams uh, each week between us. Yeah, thirty-three points. Thirty-three points. Yeah, that's like I'm advice. proud of you for your good maths. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's like three <laughs> extra streams a week, um, which is huge. Um, yeah, one each and yeah. Well, that is huge because at the minute there's like none. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There's more more content for the YouTubes. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're still having and we're still having a great time doing this. Yeah, you know what? We might not be watching as much wrestling as we would potentially like. I mean, you know our feelings on WWE. If you listen to this podcast, you know our feelings on WWE. Um, Fucking suck. It is what it is. <laughs> but we'll we're we're, we're still open. We we look. We're not going to change. All right. So just. Just fucking deal with the show that we put out and enjoy it. Yeah, all right. Fucking deal with it, motherfuckers. Like we said at the like we said at the top of the show here, right? Nobody comes here for information. Yeah. No. I'd be amazed if anyone even came here for our opinion. I don't even know why people do come here, but we have a good time, and our, the people who listen to this have a good time as well. So, we do. is there any gaming news that we can take the piss out of? Uh, well, the game awards were um, a little bit ago. We've got a few big announcements in there. Okay. Um, hit me. Hit you. Okay. Hit so Hellblade Two got a uh, its first gameplay hit trailer, me. which is what did? Uh, Hellblade Two, which is exclusive oh, yeah. to Xbox. Uh, it looks really, really good. Graphics look amazing. Very yeah, strange. This is using cool. um, Unreal Engine Five, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Well, speaking of, that's another game you played. Uh, the Halo, not Halo, the Matrix um, Jack demo thing. Using Unreal Five. Oh my god, that was awesome! It's insane. It just looks it's real life, basically yeah. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I, Steve, I, I, you should I, definitely check that out if you haven't. It's really good. Like I've seen bit. I've, really I really good. I've seen a few bits and pieces on uh, social media. Yeah, I spent ages I, like. I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah, I spent ages in the you know when I get like an open world city to explore. Um, I just spent ages like on the drone, just flying around. The city, like wow, this looks amazing. It's flying all the way up high and above the buildings, yeah. looking across. It's like, well, it's totally insane. It's like there's there's like over mental. four thousand types of car or something like that in the <laughs> uh, in this little tech demo and 160 wow. miles of road and it's it's bonkers. Yeah, like, it's just crazy. I mean, if that's what video games are going to look like going forward, sign me up. I can't wait. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, yeah, bit of a challenge in there, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, so that looks awesome. Uh, next, they also announced uh, Star Wars Eclipse, which is made by Quantic Dream, which is the uh, Heavy yeah. Wayne, Heavy Wayne, Heavy Rain guys. Heavy Wayne. <laughs> Jason. Um, J- Jason. So yeah, Star Wars game in that um, style would be pretty cool, I reckon. Uh, yeah, I've seen seen some screenshots. It looks great. Yeah. Cool. Looks really good. Did you play Detroit? Uh, me, yeah, I played all of them, I think. Detroit, that, and... 
I don't know what was Beyond Human. Is that it? Beyond Two Souls. You yeah, Two Souls. Beyond Two Souls. That's it. But yeah. Detroit was become human, wasn't it? And then so it was Heavy Rain. Yeah, that was it. Beyond Two Souls, and then Detroit. Yeah, that's it. And now we've got this Star Wars one coming out. Yeah, and I like all of them. I like you know, I like the Zelda game. Yeah, I like them. I think they're good. Good fun. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Wonder Woman has been announced. Uh, yeah. It's made by the guys who made the Middle Earth games. Yeah. Um, so yeah, new another, another superhero uh, game. When I when it first got announced in Discord, I was like, "Oh, cool, a new Marvel game." I was like, oh, no, no, maybe not. DC. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I, th- I think that would be really cool because you know them Shadow of uh, Shadow of Mordor slash Shadow of War games are really cool. Yeah. So um, and they you know they're they're very highly rated as well. So if they can you know bring something special. Uh, to the table using uh, Wonder Woman, I think that's going to be great. It's going to be huge as well. Huge that Wonder Woman gets um, a standalone game. I think that's. I feel like mm. that's a big deal. Yeah, it's very cool. Because that... it'd be easy to just go for Superman or another Batman game or whatever. But the fact that they're you know giving Wonder Woman her own game, I think that's a testament to how um, how popular she's become since the, the the movies came out. Yeah, and I think it's. I, yeah, I, I think I'm really excited for this one. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, me too. Apparently, it uses the uh, Nemesis system from the latest or from the uh, Middle Earth games, which is like yeah. when you defeat an enemy, they remember you and they will come after you again. Yeah, uh, and yeah, they're powerful and yeah, it's a cool system. Underrated. Yeah, it's a really cool system. Yeah, I agree totally. They they're really good games. Yeah, then the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor, really good. Awesome stuff. Uh, Alan Wake Two got announced finally. A long time coming. Yeah, very cool trailer. Uh, apparently, it's gonna official. Be more- Official. Then it's going to be more lean towards horror, uh, the horror side of things. That's cool. Good. Very, very good. Um, new Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog movie got announced um, with a new trailer. Not announced, but it's going to have a new trailer uh, yeah. with Tails and Knuckles. Looks pretty cool. Um, and you've not seen the first one yet, and you I'm still need, not. <laughs> I need to. to sort your life out and watch <laughs> it because it's so good. Yeah. I've been Steve already texting about this yesterday, actually, like how good the new one looks and how much fun the first one is like video game movies generally not good <laughs> like you could name the good ones probably on one hand probably there's not many there really there's... isn't many um uh sonic being one of them yeah um... uh, the latest mortal kombat i enjoyed the first mortal kombat i enjoyed i've, got, I've got the latest one to watch it's good no nice. uh, i enjoyed the latest tomb raider movie oh yeah um, I was uh, Detective Pikachu. Was you in that one? I was, oh I yeah, know. that was good. Yeah, oh, that's that all right. Good. Actually, that is good. Yeah, I saw it on Amazon Prime. I thought I might watch that as well. Yeah, definitely watch that. That's good. Cool. But yeah, I was talking about where you can watch the first movie. Apparently, you can watch it on Hulu and you get like a free trial. So I might just sign up for the free trial, watch it, and is it, it's on Netflix. <laughs> is it? Oh, okay. I'm it's certain it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm certain it is. Oh, um, okay. Just to uh, just to sorry to cut across you both there. Um, the reason I keep looking up at the corner is because I've put the Matrix thing on YouTube and watched huh? the... Oh, right, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Amazing. Fucking that. Uh, yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's I'm so good. It, it's a 4K um, as well, so... Like a 4K wow. walkthrough type thing, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just looks... It looks real. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to look really closely to go... It, it's only the the movements that you realise. Oh, actually, it's a video game, not the actual film. Yeah, yeah. it's actually there's only just pretty... some slight movements, but everything else just looks. I mean, that oh, Jesus Christ, that's <clears throat> unbelievable. It's actually pretty cool because like it shows you um, like when you get to sort of when it opens up a little bit, um, you get to flick between sort of graphical modes. Yeah, yeah. and like sort of shows you. Uh, the progress of it all. It's really, really cool. Really interesting. So I would definitely give it a download. Um, it's its worth it just to see what it can do. It's crazy. Yeah, wow. incredible. And for all the people oh. that shit on the, or tried to shit on the Xbox Series S, it runs on that. And <laughs> it's a tech showcase for that as well. Um, wow. Not on PS4 or Xbox One. So it's just for the next-gen consoles exclusively. Very cool. Very impressive. I will turn that off because it keeps distracting me. <laughs> it's really, really impressive. But yeah, Finn, watch the Sonic movie. It's on Netflix. I'm certain of it. Cool. I'll watch um, it and report back. Yes, definitely do. 
Awesome. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Oh yeah, I'm sure I will. I love Sonic. Uh, so what else we got? Uh, Horizon got a new trailer. It looks like Horizon. It is on Netflix. Oh, it is? Okay, sweet. Okay, well, I'll get on that. Uh, we've got that. Uh, Find about December remakes coming to PC. Uh, Destiny 2's yep. doing a thing. <laughs> to try not still to look, going. Still going, still going. Still going. <laughs> I'm afraid to play it because I know it will suck me back in again. I'll be playing it for weeks. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Um, Gollum got a new uh, cinematic trailer. Forgot that game existed. Oh, I did as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. I completely forgot that game existed. Yeah, interesting trailer. Uh, it's still, not gonna, still a ways off. I think it's not going to come until 2023 at least, I reckon. Who's that made by? Um, I'm actually not sure, to be honest. Uh, let's have a look. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Um. Uh, it's developed by Daedalic Entertainment. I don't recognise. Now, uh, I'm sure they've made something that I've played before, and that's what made me interested in the in the Gollum game. Yeah, let's have a look. Um, look at the game list. The journey, the long journey home. Um, state of mind. A year of rain. What did you get? I haven't heard of. Um, state of mind. I've played. Yeah, on Switch actually. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, but it was it was none of them. But it was uh, I remember it piquing my interest at least. Yeah, mm. two games I've heard of, but nothing, nothing like big and huge that mm. jumps out of me. Nothing mm. big and huge that jumps out of you. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. But yeah, that's cool. Um, Cophead has finally got some new DLC. I thought Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's going to be a new game, but nope, DLC. That's cool. I love, Cup- I love Cuphead. I need to replay oh, that. Cuphead rules. Yeah. It's hard, but it rules. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, speaking of Sonic, they uh, turned off some kind of gameplay from Sonic Frontiers, which is their new game. Coming out mm. 2022 sometime, late 2022. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw this and I was like, <sighs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think at this point I've fucking, I've given up. <laughs> oh, I can't go Sonic. Sonic. Uh, it, With 3D yeah. Sonic games, I think I've given up because they're just <laughs> mm. they're just not very good. I, I can't even, you know, begin to sugarcoat it anymore. <laughs> I love Sonic, right? And I grew up on Sonic and um, you know all the rest of it. But this this game, I don't know. I saw this little trailer thing for it, and they showed off a little bit of environments and whatever. And I just thought. This looks like any other Sonic 3D game. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Every other Sonic 3D game looks exactly the same. This is open world. This is like Breath of the Wild style open world Sonic game. But Do you really think that works with Sonic though? Yeah, I think you can. <sighs> you imagine sprinting across a huge open field at full speed at Sonic. I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'll reserve judgment on it. Until... Up, in, up until now, like all 3D Sonic games... Maybe not Dreamcast games, so, but if it's been like a run the forwards and beat the enemies and finish the level, well, uh, which you know, I don't, you know, I don't hate those on the 3D Sonic games. I've always enjoyed them. For I, don't, I don't hate them. Uh, I just think they're all a bit the nah. same. You don't, you don't have much control over them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, this, I look forward to this. We don't know much about it yet. It's only like the environments we've seen. I'm, I'm hopeful, as I always am with Sonic, but. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, well. I tell you what. I'll I'll save my critiques until we've seen a lot more of it. Yeah. I thought it looked pretty cool. Exactly. But again, we'll wait and see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Showed off some uh, Forspoken, which is a game by Square Enix. Um, oh yeah, man. This looks good. It's really, really good. Very uh, fantasy. You got magic. Um, mm. Stuff like open world. Looks really, really cool. I look forward to playing that. It does. Super cool. Um, and they revealed a game out of nowhere, um, Warhammer Space Marine 2. Uh, the first game was basically, they looked at Gears of War, which has a guy running around with a machine gun and a chainsaw, or machine gun yeah. chainsaw. It's like, we have a guy with a machine gun and a chainsaw, let's let's make that into a Gears of War style game. And it was actually really fun. It wasn't like mind-blowingly awesome, but it was a fun, a fun time. Shooting dudes, changing dudes. I'll never touch a Warhammer game again after the Warhammer nerds came after me. <laughs> what, was, <laughs> what 
I can't remember. What's that? Did you play a game on stream? Yeah, I did like a little video for, um, I think it was Space Hulk, some Warhammer bollocks. Oh, yeah. And um, the nerds were were not happy with my critiques. <laughs> you, know, you just don't, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. <laughs> hey, look, crawl back into your basement, ass wipes. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Eat boy. the what's this out of your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking dweebs. All right. Go. But and it's... paint some figures. <laughs> go, go and do that. Yeah, go and paint some little figures uh, and, or whatever it is you guys like to do, you know, and leave me the fuck alone. All right. <laughs> yeah. But that, it... that video still gets views now. <laughs> really? Does <laughs> it? Yep. Wow. Mental. Uh, but yeah, it's just basically Gears of War, so you put you probably like it. Um, it's Warhammer, so it can go fuck itself. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, you uh, know, it could be the greatest game in the world, but because of that, no, I'm not playing it. <laughs> no, that's fair. I played uh, Dawn of War two on PC, so don't come after me, nerds. I, I, I liked it. You know. that sounds geeky as shit. It is. It's super geeky. It's like Command and Conquer, but Warhammer. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, Saints Row got shown off. It looks fine. It's Saints Row. Yes, it's Saints Row. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of VR, uh, Among Us has a new VR game coming. It does. It's just uh, pretty interesting. We need to play the first one at some point. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna try the VR one as well when it comes oh, yeah. out. I think that looks really cool. Very cool. Very random, but cool. Uh, With the amount else? of Oculuses that have shifted this holiday season, I think. Um, that will be outrageously popular. Oh yeah, big time! It'll be everywhere on YouTube in no time. Um, what else? We got Star Trek Resurgence. We Star Trek nerds out there. It's made by Telltale or former Telltale guy guys. Telltale oh okay. Is that what it is? Is it? I didn't realize it was um, the former tel- Telltale guys. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I haven't said much about it other than it's a game that exists and it's coming out. Um, so yeah, if you're into cool. Star Trek and you like that style of game then that's going to be for you, no doubt. Speaking of VR again, Star Trek Bridge Crew absolutely rules. <laughs> nice. I remember playing it on PSVR. It's awesome. Not even a big Star Trek guy, um, but Star Trek Bridge Crew, so so much fun. Cool. Awesome. Uh, at, least we, at least we're winning over some of the nerds. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek nerds, <laughs> okay. Warhammer nerds, no. Warhammer <laughs> nerds, no. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, Look, if you if you, I mean, if you did listen to this podcast, you probably won't after this episode. And that's okay, <laughs> um, because we don't want oh. you here. I mean, oh. I, I, I like it. okay. I mean, I don't like the figures or painting it or the actual game, but the Dawn of War no, Two. So was good. What do you like? You just like the name. <laughs> like Dawn of War Two was good. Space Marine was good. Finn creates a wrestler <laughs> on SmackDown, and it's called Warhammer, <laughs> and it's just that's a, good a massive name. version of Finn. And don't tell Vince that he'll he'll he'll, have, he'll just. Do I was going to say. <laughs> Warhammer. Well, Vince is listening to be like, that's a great name. <laughs> Warhammer. That's a great name. <laughs> Simon Warhammer. like Raker. Sign back that brawn st- strongman that we had. <laughs> <laughs> he can be Warhammer. Uh, oh, God. Give him a reduced contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're checking well. Warhammer there. You can listen to this podcast if you still want to. <laughs> they don't. They've gone. Oh yeah, they went. They went. They went, <laughs> they went probably what, five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you went to be fair, I think they went when I did that space Hulk. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they were gone just then. They went then. Yeah. <laughs> they were gone. They were gone. Ah uh, boy. Uh, Dying Light Two got shown off. Talked about that. Talked about that earlier. Prompted me to buy yeah. the first game again. Good stuff. Um, it's about else? time this game came out as well. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, the Halo TV series has got a uh, trailer. Forgot that was a thing. Yeah, you know, going back to video game movies, at least the future of video game TV shows is fairly um, hopeful. Mm, yeah. You've got The Last of Us coming to HBO and stuff next year, or things next year. And then you've got this uh, Halo TV show as well, which looks pretty cool. So um, I was saying this to Steve again yesterday. This is something. Like with video game movies, you can't tell uh, a potentially 10, 20, 30 hour story in 90 minutes of movie. Yeah, exactly. it's just impossible to do. Yeah, um, and that, that's why video game movies don't work for the most part because they try and cram like, an entire video game's worth of story, including action sequences and all that crap, into 
an hour and a half, and it, you just you physically just can't do it. So a TV show based on a video game, if you can't be asked to play the video game, is you know a good way to probably experience a story like The Last of Us. Yeah. Stop making Resident Evil movies. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Shit. Think, yeah, if you think about Resident Evil movies, they have nothing to do with the game, basically. Um, well, the new one does, and it still looks shit. Oh, oh, yeah, the, yeah that one, yeah. I mean, like the Mila Jolovich type, that's the name. Those ones. Um, very yeah, little. Yeah, they were the... so loosely. Yeah, throw some, throw some buzzwords in there. T virus. There you go. Now it's a Resident Evil game. You got the yeah, T virus. Umbrella. In it. Umbrella. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, we'll throw a couple of bits in for the nerds, like the zombie dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember Albert Wesker? Ooh. Ah, uh, member. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, member mention. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, member zombies. <laughs> I remember. Get along south Yeah, me too. Okay. Oh man. So yeah, I think TV shows are probably a better way for people I, to I experience so. video game stories than video game movies. Yeah, How can you possibly try yeah. and explain anything to do with Assassin's Creed <laughs> in a movie? Yeah, exactly. Right, you've got this guy who uh, travels back in time with this machine, but not really. His, his, his memories uh, are yeah, <laughs> different characters. It's fucking ludicrous. <laughs> yeah. It, Crazy. it takes a longer than a film length to get to the bloody opening credits of Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the game for longer than you would watch a movie. <laughs> and then the credits start coming up. It's like, oh, fuck, this, this game's going to be really long. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, man. in future, no more video game movies, apart from Sonic, because that's okay. Yeah, so it's, it's only simple. Yes. You're a hedgehog, you went fast. No more goddamn Resident Evil movies, though. Jesus. The Silent Hill movies, they sucked as well. Oh, God, don't remind me. Yes. God, they were so bad. Yeah. It took me so many times to watch the first one. I think I fell asleep like every single time I watched it. I think I gave up. I started to watch it. It was like, this is garbage. Good well, we, the, the one, second one. Yeah. The one we mentioned, uh, the one we were on about in our in our text and our messages last night, Doom. Oh, awful. Doom is awful. Oh, I didn't know they made a Doom movie. <laughs> it was a blank it's one fucking, out. It's, it's absolutely terrible. I, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't the, tend, I don't tend to go to the cinema to watch bad films because I only go to the ones that I think, oh, that looks good. But I went to that one because it was Doom. It's like, oh, okay, it's Doom. It's got the rock in it. <laughs> oh, I How bad can it be? <laughs> if it were, if it weren't for the fact that my mate was like. Uh, God, let's stay to the end. I've, I've paid my money now. I'd have walked out that bad. I've wow. never walked out of a film. Never even considered walking out of a film. And I've seen some shit. But that <laughs> the is... Rock, I like. Carl Urban, I like. That movie, not good. Not good Terrible. at all. Absolutely <laughs> awful. Oh they do one. They do one little bit of like where the camera goes like FPS. Oh yeah. Um, uh, like first person and um, for the nerds. <laughs> and you go Arr! for about twenty seconds, and then that's it. <laughs> it's just like the game, and then then the rest of it's not like the game. And then the rest of it, you're like, oh, I might as well go now. This is shit. <laughs> this very, it's a very poor film. Five point yeah. one on IMDb. It's too high. Yeah, it's very too high. That's yeah. way too high. It should be probably a three max. Yeah, I mean IMDb is usually fairly brutal as well, but five point oh, two high. is too high. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. yeah. So yeah, there's that. TV shows much better, like you say, thirty hour game, three series, ten episodes a series, one hour an episode, boom. Perfect. There you go. Wonderful. Yeah. Spot on. Um and that's pretty much all the biggest news. Um Elden Ring got a new trailer. Cool. Excited for that one. Did you play the beta for it or did you not get in? Uh I didn't get in because I didn't know it was a thing until people were already talking about it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I missed a, boat. missed a boat on that one. Um, but yeah, it looks amazing. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Uh, to, to tell you what did look good that I enjoyed the trailer for was uh, Justice League. Uh, sorry, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Oh, yeah. I thought the uh, the new trailer for that was really good and has piqued my interest greatly. Whereas before, it was just sort of like, you know, the CGI trailer, which I thought was funny, but, you know, didn't really explain what the game was. But I'm far more hyped for that than I am the um, Gotham Knights, is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't know what that is to be honest. Still don't know. They haven't even showed it off yet. Gotham Knights. 
Oh yeah, they've showed it off. I just I don't really understand what it is. Yeah, I don't. I mean, is it is it like Arkham Knight but with three main characters that you switch between? Yeah, who knows? But yeah, I agree with uh, Suicide Squad. That does look good. Yeah. Speaking of uh, games with three main characters that you switch between, Grand Theft Auto oh, yeah. Online has brought another expansion out for GTA Online. This one's got Dr. Dre in it. Yes. Sure. Why not? That. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like new exclusive music from Dr. Dre in GTA Online because obviously. It's, it's been, yeah. Instead of spending money on Dr. Dre, why don't you make your remasters good? <laughs> Go back and make well, remake I think them. Well, fixed them a bit now. Yeah. But like they could have just spent a bit more money on him, make to give him a little bit extra time, a bit more polish on it before putting him out. It's like, come on. Don't even do that, just bring GTA 6 out. <laughs> yeah, all that, yeah, to make, make another game. Just make <laughs> GTA 6, finally. Yeah. That ain't never uh, coming out. No. We'll be like 80 by the time it comes out. Mm. We're still doing podcasts, obviously, as old men. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, it's cool because this new this new expansion's got uh, Franklin in it. Oh wow! From okay. The main story. Remember him? Remember the main story? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> remember when GTA yeah, Online? Remember? <laughs> remember? Uh, remember? Remember GTA Five campaign? <laughs> I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Uh, and always been a, like, G- they never got any like story DLC for five. That sucks. I know. Like especially when there is like these stories that have been told like through the online bit. Yeah, like this is like a single player story for online. So why not just bring it out as a single player DLC? Like, I mean, it has got Franklin in it after all, so it follows on. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who oh, fucking knows? Who, who knows why Rockstar make any decisions? Oh wait, money. Okay, right, got it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> whatever makes the most money. Yep. And uh, apparently, Doctor Dre brings milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. So that's what <laughs> that is. I guess so. Yeah. Um, anyone got anything they want to say about wrestling this week? Um, War Games is really good. Not as good as was like that... past War Games, but it was good. But like, NXT two point it was good. Okay. Um, good. yeah, the 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 War Games match itself, the men's one. I mean, both were good. The women's one was good as well. The men's one, especially, was uh, very good, especially for it being uh, Johnny Gargano's last match in NXT. Um, he came out with all the entrance music, which is a nice touch. Yep. Uh, oh. he had his uh, ring gear was like an a march to past takeovers. Um, yeah. It was very cool. You can tell he was uh, quite emotional about the whole thing, uh, especially now, on, on the next night when he came out. I saw a thing earlier on. Um, Meltzer basically um, has reported that NXT are, are under the impression that both will be back, so meaning Johnny Gargano and Kyle O'Reilly. Hmm. Yeah, because I know Johnny, when he's um, on the last episode of NXT 2.0, he was on uh, and said his, he talked about his, uh, obviously his, his upcoming kid. <laughs> um, he was going to want to spend time with them, um, you know, which is a smart thing to do, obviously. Of he wants to go home. He wants to be a dad, which is um, a good thing for sure. But yeah, I do think we'll see him back. I don't know, but yeah, at some point, hopefully. Hopefully not too far away, but I do think he'll, he'll go somewhere else before coming back to NXT. If that makes sense, maybe do, do the rounds on the indie circuit for a while. I, I mean, I think NXT needs to move on from these guys now. Yeah. yeah. But I also think the main roster needs to figure out how to use these kind of guys <laughs> and use them to their full advantage because, yeah. you know, Kyle O'Reilly and Johnny Gargano, they're, 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 they're huge assets to, or could be huge assets to WWE, you know? Um, you know, do you go to AEW and... And I don't, I don't want to like shit on AEW here because I really love AEW. You know, yeah. uh, I watch it every week. It's the only wrestling show I do watch at the minute. But you know, there are people that have signed with AEW that I think, you know, they're not doing a lot. And I know not everybody mm. can be in main event slots all at the same time, but I feel like there's people who have signed there that have come in with big fanfare and aren't really doing anything. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Brian Danielson, he's gone in there and, you know, he's fighting for the title this week on uh, Dynamo, which is great because Daniel, you know, Brian Danielson is one of the best wrestlers in the entire world. Yeah. CM Punk is making a big splash in AEW because he's CM Punk, you know? <laughs> yeah. Of course. 
But is Adam Cole doing what you think he would be doing in AEW? I think he's I doing mean, right. Because it's one of those where you can't, not everyone can be like in the main event scene. No, you're right. Um, but if this was happening in WWE, Finn, I think people would be questioning WWE's um, philosophy behind bringing them yeah. up to the main roster. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do like him teaming with Bobby Fish just as that sort of like, hey, you remember this? Because <laughs> obviously they were, remember? Um, I remember. Remember Undisputed Era? I remember. Like I see people were saying they want uh, Kyle O'Reilly to go with them to have like an Undisputed Era kind of I'd enjoy uh, that. Reunion. I'd like that. Me too. But, but I, I'd like to see the, I'd like to see it sort of, I don't, I, I like Adam Cole with the Young Bucks, but I would like to see Adam Cole against the Young Bucks. I don't want him mm. to sort of be just sort of... Adam Cole, for me, is a guy who can be a world champion in any company. Yeah, easily. But I have to be honest, I don't see him being the world champion in AEW. Not yet, yeah. Um, I do think he will um, depart from the Elite... Um, Hopefully, he's done soon. Uh, I know at the minute they're they're you know quite close. It's quite you know it's entertaining to watch them do their thing, uh, but I think down the road they will see that. I know Omega's having time off, so I imagine yeah. I imagine Cole will be put in that spot until Omega comes back, and we turn heel on Omega. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't talk wrestling, but I, I do think eventually we'll see. I, I neither can I, but I just think I think you know with some of the signings that AEW have made, if WWE had bought people up to the main roster and use them in the same way that AEW have used some of the guys that they've signed, Mohammed. I think people would be very critical of what WWE are doing. Now, I know we are always very critical, especially these days, as to what WWE is doing. <laughs> um, uh, but I think I do think AEW is a little bit guilty of it as well, but they get away with it a bit more. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um, it's still doing better than WWE are doing now. <laughs> like Adam Cole is on TV wrestling, he isn't a manager called uh whatever you want to call him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Budge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you know what and that 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 kind of thing is fair enough. He gets to go and he gets to be Adam Cole. Yeah. That's fine. But you know he's basically gone from being, you know, the main guy in NXT to being uh very middle ground in AEW. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. And hey, look, that can, that can absolutely change. I'm not sort of saying that it can't. I just think, you know, I, I just think there's um, a little bit of a case to be made against AEW for a change. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. It's, it's, that's... It is very, yeah, it must be very difficult, like having all these big name talents. Like, all right, we want to use them all in the main event. How do we do that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, I see and what I you think... mean. And you know, and if you're Johnny Gargano, do you want to? Do you want to be part? I mean, yeah, okay, it's supposed to be a brilliant place to work, and obviously that is the cool place to be at the minute, and it's the the cool wrestling to watch. But if you're Johnny Gargano or Kyle O'Reilly, do you think you're going to reach the next level of your career there when there is so much talent? I mean, you know, oh, you can almost there. guarantee that Brian Danielson is going to be the world champion at some point. No, you can almost yeah. guarantee that CM Punk is going to be the world champion at some point. Mm-hmm. Kenny Omega will have it again. They'll sh- they'll find some way eventually to make Cody the world champion. Uh, yeah, but no. if you're Kyle O'Reilly, <laughs> you know, do you come in just a team with Bobby Fish to do what you've already done? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, uh, do you, uh, if you're Johnny Gargano, do you come in? I mean, you know, there's. there's there's only so many people that can have the slots. But I think sometimes, yep, WWE gets a load of shit, and that's fine. Uh, because a lot of the time, WWE is a load of shit. <laughs> but, you know, I think everyone's like, oh, he's got to go to AEW, he's got to go to AEW. But you could very easily get lost in the shuffle in AEW. Yeah. yeah. Like someone, so very easy. Yeah, someone like Johnny Gargano, also my years, and as much as I love him, um, isn't as big of a draw as uh, like a Daniel Bryan or Brian Anderson or a CM uh-huh. Punk or Kenny or Omega. Punk. No, yeah. no, not at all. 
So yeah. And then you also have to take into consider- consideration the the quote unquote four pillars of AEW that they always talk about. So like uh, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, Jungle Boy, MJF. They're all going to be world champion one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know how are they going to feel if other guys were going to come in and take the slots that you know are seemingly you know in their destiny? You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only time that I've seen any sort of negative uh, talk towards AEW and, and a signing that they've made is was was Miro in the he went there he made did that did that promo about the glass ceiling and the brass ring and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and then it felt like they did nothing with him and I know he's mm-hmm. Is he's either got a title or has been a champion of something. He has been. A, he was the TNT he, champion. He was yeah. the TNT champion. But again, it was like, oh, I've signed Miro. He's gonna he, finally. He's gonna get used properly. And it's like, has he been used properly? And then, and then, you've got the likes of Adam Cole getting signed, Brian Daniels and CM Punk, and the Andrade. likes of Andrade. You know, and and, and uh, um, Malachi as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And and. Again, they're probably looking at it and thinking, uh, 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 you know, great. It, it's a great place to work. There, there are options because you can go wrestle in Japan. If you're under contract with AEW, you can go to Impact if you wanted to because they've got that, uh, you know, the, the forbidden I think door. That's, I, think, that. I think that's um, died down now, the Impact stuff. It I think that working like relationship has. is over because obviously at one point, the Good Brothers were on AEW yeah. every week and they've not been on there for weeks. So yeah. I think that working relationship is actually finished now. So, and that, and that, if that is the case, then that does it does beg it does make you wonder whether you know the likes of the, the names that we have just mentioned are they now sitting there thinking, oh, it's "Deja vu, this is," mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then there's talk of Bray Wyatt going there, and then you th- and then you know it's, it's like, well, if he comes in, he's going to get an, one hell of a push, surely. Yeah. Uh, so, so it does it does make you wonder. Um, like you say, not everyone can go to AEW. No, uh, not, an, a, an AEW shouldn't. An AEW shouldn't sign everyone just because they can, because that's what WWE did. Signed everyone yeah. because they could, and then now they get absolutely slated for letting releasing people when they've not been utilized. Blah blah blah. So it becomes it becomes unsustainable because just become yeah yeah you know. Yeah, you know, AEW will get sort of ad revenue from Dark and Dark Elevation or whatever it's called on YouTube. But that's not a TV deal. No. no. You know, and Rampage is only one hour and it doesn't do that well. Yeah. So I think it's now time to stop signing wrestlers. I agree. And build with what... Yeah, you know, yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting when a new debut happens. Of course it is. You know, would I mark out for Bray Wyatt turning up this week on Dynamite? Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> but yeah. you know, sometimes you have to look at it from a from a sensible perspective and think, mm. is this actually the right thing to be happening? Like yeah. AW signed Jay Lethal. I, I, I mean, oh, I, yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, Jay Lethal. I know. I'm, I'm sure he's great, but does he need to be on AW? Like, like you say, it's no, like, he doesn't. What, what are you going to do with him? I mean, yeah. it doesn't need to be on AEW. He doesn't. I like him. Yeah, I like yeah, Jay Lethal a lot. I always yeah, have. Yeah. But no, he doesn't need to be on AEW. I mean, I've I've, I've mentioned it before. I guess that the as, as well the draw of signing for AEW is that thing of look, you can go elsewhere. Or in the case of uh, Brian Danielson, I want six months off to spend time with the family. Mm-hmm. Jericho's doing it now. He's on tour in this country, is, or, yeah. or, or in the yeah. UK at least. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That that that's. I, could he have done that in WWE? Probably with his status. You know, he's that legend yeah. veteran status now. But that's probably what what appeals to a lot of these guys is. Well, you know, they're not AW aren't going to expect me on the road, three shows a week, four shows a week, five shows a week, fifty weeks a yeah. year, and I'm going to be paid well. And used fairly decently. I've got creative control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the lack of TV time, I guess, and and the fact that oh well, you know, I've been here for four years now, or you know, and I'm not champion. It, I guess it depends who who the person is and how much it bothers them. Yeah, 
uh, eventually, you know, fans will start to ask questions. I think. Yeah, I think it's so. just like they do with WWE. You know, eventually fans will turn. I think not turn as in they'll start. You know, going at AEW the same way that they go at WWE. No, um, but you know, wrestling fans are very fickle. You know, and when when their favorites aren't on TV week in week out doing what you know the, their fans think they should or shouldn't be doing, then people start to get will start to get pissy. Yeah, 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 definitely. And you know, I think with AEW at the minute, it is definitely time to stop signing talent and use what you've got because that roster is ridiculous. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's good. I mean, that that is a ridiculous roster now. Yeah. Great. But I like, you know, I, as much as I love seeing Brian Danielson, I think he's, he's the best wrestler in the world. Love his character. I think he's just absolutely phenomenal. I love seeing CM Punk just, you know, because I, I've always liked CM Punk now, but I like seeing the guys, the AW own guys, you know, yeah, like the, yeah. the originals that were there. Like I enjoyed immensely watching Hook on um, Rampage this week, and I mm. thought he looked brilliant. He's got a an amazing. He's got he's a good looking kid, and you know he's got all the talent in the world. Obviously, he's been he's been trained by by Cody, and obviously his dad helps because um, his dad is Taz, obviously. Yeah, and you know I like seeing people like that. You know, and that's what I always loved about NXT. You see these people that you know. Yeah, you know, you didn't know much about, and then they they were nurtured up to mm. a certain point. Yeah, okay, then they go to the main roster and be fucked up, and then <laughs> go somewhere else. But <laughs> you, you know, you see my point, right? I like yeah. to see those kind of guys. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I don't need to see everybody who leaves WWE go to AEW. Yeah, like since Braun Strowman has left WWE, I have no interest in seeing him anywhere. Yep, <laughs> he turned up at ROH final battle of the weekend, ROH's final show. And it was cool to see him and he's doing some stuff with EC3. But again, EC3 misused in WWE, but have you missed him? Yeah. How, you know, you know, have you been bothered about him going to AEW? No. No, not really. Yeah. I don't think no. I mean. no. Yeah. No. Mike Bennett or the, you know, Mike, there's a, we could do it all day as well. We could just yeah. go through an enormous list of people that have been released that you've probably forgotten about. <laughs> oh god yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I, I guess there's that there's that balance between what aw can at least provide you f- with some variety whereas it feels like the wwe what the direction that wwe are going in you are going to say and, and we've had this for a very long time in wwe hence why people had started to turn off it's the same people every week every week every week and it's that balance between I want to see them, but not every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between, hang on, I want to see the. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's that. It's that balance. It's yeah. that balance between between the two. And I can only imagine as someone that's you know, if you are uh, Vince or Cody or Tony Khan or whoever is, that must be really hard to do, regardless yeah. of the size of your roster, whether it's whether you've got ten wrestlers mm-hmm. or whether you've got three hundred wrestlers. Um. It must be hard to keep everyone happy. Of course, because you know limited TV time. Yeah, yeah. AEW's got three <laughs> hours of TV per week, and then obviously the stuff they put on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know that's uh, WWE. You've got you know five hours of main TV. Then you've got NXT, which obviously you can see the way that NXT is going, where the way they're going to nurture their their own superstars for the future. Mm-hmm. And I do like that i really yeah. do like that mm. um because they, they are trying to do something different and obviously they've, they've um they've announced this um new sort of scheme where um they're taking on sort of college athletes and they're going to sort of nurture them through their the stage of their career until they eventually come to wwe and stuff like that mm. so i understand I, I i can't watch it because it's crap at the minute and i just don't <laughs> enjoy it but I understand the route that they're looking to take. Yeah. Of it's just going to take a long time to get there. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, definitely. <sighs> but with AEW, I still, I think they, they need to just find the, the, the right balance. And, you know, and they, they now need to build on what they've got. Get that TV viewership up. Really establish, establish yourself as the competitor. 
you know? Yeah. And then, you know, as you grow and your TV expands and maybe you start doing more pay-per-view and all that sort of stuff, then bring more people in. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's yeah, a tough balance, and I, I I agree with what you said there, Steve. I I think it is a tough, it is a tough balance because you know, Tony Khan wants all these people in AEW. He wants to be seen as the guy who's bringing in all this talent that WWE rejects and all you know or whatever. But there's got to be a there's got to be a there's got to be a stopping point where yeah. you, where yeah. you look at it and go, okay, in that's enough now. We've got exactly what we need. To put on, you know, three. I think Rampage should probably go to two hours, maybe, uh, and establish that as a, a proper second show. Because at the minute, I, I like, I do like the hour-long Rampage, but um, I think eventually, when things start to get back to normal and they can do it live every week, it should go to two hours. Um, but yeah, build on what you've got, increase the TV numbers, and then start to bring other people in when you can fit them in. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm. and a lot of people, some people probably won't agree with what we've said tonight about AEW, but that's the beauty of opinion, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What we need, what we need is Triple H Pro Wrestling to start. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then again, I haven't got time to watch another promotion. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very true. Yeah, that's fair, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. We talk uh, somewhat positive about WWE. Talk about the good stuff uh, that happened recently. Um, that's it. No, I'm joking. Uh, so this, the, stuff is, <laughs> the stuff with uh, Sami Zayn and Brock Lesnar has been very funny. Uh, very good, yeah. Really good stuff. I've, yeah. I've been catching it on highlights and stuff, but yeah, uh, my camera's lasted all this time, and now it's just booted me off. Oh, no. And I'm just a voice, because of course I am. But here <laughs> we go. Camera's coming back. It's the voice. But yeah, Sami won a, uh, a universal title shot. Um and Brock Lesnar came in and ruined it. Um, yeah, he convinced him to have the match on that week's SmackDown instead of that like day one. Um, so I've got a baby view apparently. Um, yeah. And then beat him up for the match once the it was over. And then this week he came out in a wheelchair and Brock Lesnar beat him up some more. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Lesnar's doing some really good work as well at the minute as a face. Yeah, Brock. yeah, really good. And Sammy, and Sammy's great. Yeah. Yeah, Sammy's excellent. Yeah, really, really excellent. But yeah, you know what? There, there are little bits of WWE every week that you can pick and go, and go. Yeah, okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's no. just sort of, you know, Raw's still too long, and it's the same old stuff all the time. Yeah, with the same old arguments with WWE. There's a, there are positives to take out of the weekly TV. Mm. Um, but you know, there are also negatives to take out of the weekly TV. Yeah, the positives did, did are it? far fewer than the negatives at the minute. Like, uh, more the only thing I can think of that was decent was Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. That was good. Mm-hmm. I would see big things in Liv's future. Um, yeah. But that's yeah, literally the only thing yeah. I can remember for more. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I mean, I, it doesn't make me want to rush back to watching even SmackDown, which was obviously no, the, is, the, is the better of the two shows. But I don't, I don't feel any urge to rush back and start watching SmackDown <clears> when I read things that, like... In a two-hour show, there was seventeen minutes of wrestling. Okay, that's I mean, stupid. What yeah. is that? What is that all about? Yeah, I mean really? that's stupid. It's stupid. It's not. Oh, it's, it's, not... Just, it's just unbelievable. It really is. Um, yeah. Again, you're watching. That... You know, if you're watching a wrestling show, you're watching it for wrestling. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we go, let's touch on Jeff Hardy real quick. He's released from WWE this week. Uh, having some personal issues, refused uh, help and rehab from WWE if reports are to be believed. Um, and that's a real shame. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's next with Jeff Hardy, but all I can really say is that, obviously, we wish him all the best. Yeah. Matt Hardy on Twitter has been saying, like, it's not that bad, not that serious. Obviously, we don't know the full story. We don't know what's going on um, with him personally. But as you say, we wish him the best and hopefully it's not too serious. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's no, you know, his, his problems are well documented over the years. Uh, yeah. You don't need us to tell you if you're a wrestling fan. Uh, and it sucks that it's come to him being released. Obviously, there was that footage of him at the house show, uh, probably not performing to standard, maybe a little bit sluggish or whatever. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, he tagged, it's tough to it's tough to see. Yeah, he it tagged is. out and then just yeah. walked through the crowd and left, which is very strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no. You know, there's help. things that we're not. There's things that we're not ever going to know about. Yeah, and it doesn't help that the first story that I need he was in when he came back was uh, like with Seamus taking the mick out of his like alcohol legend and stuff like that. Mm. So, like, come on, <laughs> not, not helping the yeah, movie. Yeah, no, not at all. But um, like you know, like we said, we wish Jeff Hardy all the best, and we hope uh, he gets better. I mean, wh- wherever he goes, if he can keep himself okay and on the straight and narrow, he's a he's an asset. So yeah, good. big time. You know, uh, whether he goes to AEW and teams up with Matt Hardy, but Lord knows Matt Hardy could do with a bit of invigorating. I don't like the uh, the uh, house of house of Hardy. Uh, house yeah, of I don't like that at all. I think it's crap. Um, yeah, but you know, it, we'll see. I guess I, I'm assuming he's got a 90 day no compete, and hopefully during that time he can get himself straight. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Uh, right, next week, uh, we're going to do the games of the year. Yeah. We're going to do it in yeah. a different style. We're going to have categories. We're going to do it like the Game Awards, but good. better. Yeah, but good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna, it's the Games and Graps Game of the Year Awards. Yeah, I like, like it. it. Yeah, so you can look forward to that next week. That'll be good times. And then... Uh, towards the back end of the year, we'll do um, a Games and Graps Matches of the Year Awards. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, that's They're going to be all AW. Bit, must be said. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Probably a couple of yeah. NXT matches in there. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure there's, it out. There's, there's things that have happened this year in wrestling that I've, I've like, I think, is that this year or was that last year? I'm, like, Maybe we should do moment the best moments of, in wrestling of 2021 yeah. instead of matches. I do that. Yeah, my number one, I'll reveal it now, is when I cancelled the network. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, yeah. yeah. That's totally fair. Oh, yeah. There's been some um, good stuff. There has. Yeah. There has been some good stuff. And we'll, we'll do a we'll do a moments of the year podcast for wrestling. Probably going to be easier. I, I like that. Yeah. I think it will yeah. be easier. Okay. Not good. We'll do that. Cool. Um, anything that, that anybody else would like to say before we go? Um, I think that's it. That's what I remember. No, all good. All right. In that case, this has been episode 158 of the Games and Graphs podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. 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 And youtube.com forward slash Games Graphs. Go follow us on social media. That is at Games and Graphs, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are yeah. also on TikTok. Just search Games and Graphs. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week with uh, the game of the, the games and grabs game of the year awards. Yeah, T O T D M G T O T Y A. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll probably come, we'll probably come up with a, a less ridiculous name for it, <laughs> or maybe an even more ridiculous name for it. Who knows? Anyway, my name is Sonny G, and I've been here with Finn Steele. Goodbye, and Steve. See you later. And we will indeed see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Bye.